China has an almost unbreakable wall of missiles to destroy any large U.S. force entering its waters. But the U.S. has a new strategy to completely dismantle it. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell, and the U.S. has a problem. For decades, the U.S. assumed that it would always have battlefield supremacy. After all, the U.S. military's budget is higher than most countries' GDP. But China is gearing up for war against Taiwan and the Pacific at large, and it has some aces up its sleeve. One of the biggest advantages China has is its huge arsenal of missiles, because nothing says, we just want to unite peacefully with Taiwan more than these babies. These help serve China's anti-axis area denial, or A2AD, capabilities to keep the U.S. out and deny the U.S. the ability to freely maneuver. Essentially, it's the most high-stakes, high-budget version of stay off my lawn in history, against someone claiming everything in the area is their lawn. The idea is that the U.S. will think twice before putting its large, expensive aircraft carriers and other high-tech arsenal within China's missile range. But the U.S. has the perfect response. I'ma do it anyway. Area denial only works if you let it. So the U.S. has a new strategy to operate within range of China's missiles. It's called Force Design 2030, and it's led by the U.S. Marine Corps. We know some of the details from this report. Literal operations in a contested environment. Literal means near the shore. Yes, that's pronounced literal. This is a very different strategy from the standard idea of warfare, where large numbers of troops from outside the enemy's shooting range fight their way in and take territory. Instead, it uses what's called Expeditionary Advance Base Operations, or EABO. Small groups of Marines sneak behind enemy lines and essentially enact guerrilla warfare. That's why Marines are radically remodeling their forces, cutting heavy tanks and howitzers in favor of drones and missiles. It's an incredibly flexible way to conduct war that makes China's missile systems useless. With a whole bunch of troops scattered around the Pacific, the U.S. could attack anywhere at any time. Decisions could be made quickly by frontline commanders. Small teams of four to six would be almost undetectable by electronic or thermal imaging, and they could completely relocate in a matter of days. It would be guerrilla warfare spanning the entire Pacific Ocean. And considering the Pacific Ocean is over 60 million square miles, 16 times the size of the U.S., there's no way China could effectively find and eliminate these guerrilla U.S. forces. To keep U.S. forces out, they'd have to construct a great seawall. These Marines even have a new ship-killing weapon system for this type of combat. They call it the Navy Marine Corps Expeditionary Ship Interdiction System, or Nemesis. They're portable, remote-operated missile launchers that Marines can set up behind enemy lines, move to a safe distance, and then fire. China's fancy aircraft carrier killing missiles are not designed for something like that. But the biggest weapon against China is friendship. China has made enemies all over the Pacific. And they're more than happy to help the U.S. Marines. Earlier this year, Japan okayed a U.S. Marine Littoral Expeditionary Regiment on Okinawa. The Marines have actually been doing a lot of training with Japan recently. There's also the Philippines and Australia. In fact, that drill broke records. The U.S. coordinated military action with as many as 12 other nations, the most ever and over a huge geographic area. Which is impressive, since I can't coordinate three friends who live in the same city about meeting up to get brunch. This strategy flips the table on China by making it harder for China to operate on what it would consider its own turf, the very thing it's been trying to do to the U.S. It would not only make it harder to target U.S. forces, but it would also give the U.S. leverage to cut China off from its own supply routes. And maybe, China will finally get the message that the Pacific Ocean isn't their lawn. And China Uncensored is only possible because of support from viewers like you. On the crowdfunding website, patreon.com slash China Uncensored. For as little as a dollar an episode, you can help us keep the show going and get a bunch of cool perks, including the ability to ask me questions I'll answer on the show. Today's question comes from RoboFireman216. Will you go on TimCast? Great question. 
I've actually already been on TimCast, several times in fact, including once with North Korean activist Yongmi Park. I'll put a link to those episodes below if you're interested. But let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me back on TimCast. It's been a few years. Thanks for your question and your support, RoboFireman216. Thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.